A few months ago, I learned the slow muscle up in 23 days. I thought that would conclude my muscle up journey and it was time to move on to learning the front lever. However, I got enough comments saying that the explosive clean muscle up is harder than the slow muscle up. So I decided to take a pause in learning the front lever and attempt to learn the explosive clean muscle up until I can do three in a row. After watching a few popular tutorials, it seems to me that compared to what I did before, all I need to do is simply keep my legs together and not bend my knees when doing the muscle up. On day one, I honestly thought I made it in my first few tries. But when I went back home and reviewed the footage, I realized my legs were not completely together and I slightly bent my knees subconsciously on the way up. I went back and tried again. But I discovered again that my legs were not completely together and I still slightly bent my knees subconsciously on the way up although I constantly told myself to not bend them. I experimented tying my legs with a rope, but it still didn't work. Due to the circumstances of this time period, I had to pause in learning the explosive clean muscle up at the park. Since I really wanted to resume training, I decided to buy a pull up bar that's possible for me to do the muscle up at home. While I was waiting for it to arrive, I came across a video where a guy was doing 22 clean explosive muscle ups in a row. I decided to analyze his video frame by frame. I discovered that his legs were pretty relaxed mostly, but when he was on the way up, it looked like his legs tensed up a bit. And it became more and more obvious during the end of his rep when he was getting more and more tired. All of a sudden, I understood why my knees bent slightly in my previous attempts after working out a few physics equations. Here's why. During the start of the position, the torque around the knees generated by the muscles of the upper body and the upper legs cancels out the opposite torque around the knees generated by weight of the upper body and upper legs. Otherwise, we would be spinning in a circle. Likewise, the torque generated by the muscles of the lower legs and the weight of the lower legs cancels out each other. I was focusing on keeping the same level of force generated by my legs throughout the whole movement. But I totally forgot that the pulling force generated by my arms would inevitably decrease gradually on the way up. Since my weight obviously didn't change, and I kept the force generated by my upper legs the same, the only possible way to keep the opposing torques the same is to lift the upper legs slightly to reduce theta. And that is the reason why I had the knee bend. In order to eliminate the knee bend, I will have to gradually apply more force than usual with my lower legs when my pulling force gradually decreases from the start to the transition. If your pulling strength is crazily strong as this guy, you won't need to adjust your legs a single bit because there's enough pulling force during the transition. As we can see again, as he gets more tired in later reps, he needs to lift his upper leg and apply more force with the lower legs to avoid the knee bend. Eventually, he runs out of pulling force to get past the transition and obviously he could lift his legs even more to do more reps if he wants to, but he refuses to do it. Obviously, the physics equation I wrote is just an approximation and the human body is way more complex. For all the biomechanics experts out there, feel free to teach all of us more in the comments section. On day 13, the pull up bar finally arrived. I tested out my theory and I couldn't believe it actually worked. But for some reason, it felt weird coming down from the first rep and somehow it seemed incredibly hard to do the second rep. I thought it was simply because I wasn't used to the new pull up bar. I trained one more day, but it still felt weird. I reviewed the footage and I realized for some reason I was always falling to the left side on the way down. Maybe the ground wasn't completely flat. So I dug out my old level to measure and found that the right side was actually slightly higher. I can't believe I made such a stupid mistake. Fortunately, the pull up bar is very portable. So I moved the pull up bar to my garage and made sure the surface was flat. After a few tries, this happened. You know what? This is it in my book. I know this doesn't look the smoothest compared to how the other experts did it out there, but I think it's time to move on to learning the front lever. For completeness, here are the remaining techniques that I knew prior to my start of learning the explosive clean muscle up. Start with a little swing and keep your body straight. Look up at the bar when you are below the bar. Once you are at the end of the swing, engage your core and pull as hard as you can. 
When you are on the way down, push yourself slightly away from the bar so you will drop back down with a little swing instead of dropping into a dead hand. In terms of the baseline strength for performing the explosive clean muscle up, my guess is weighted pull up with 30 to 50% extra body weight. The reason for my guess is that my weighted pull up is around 77% extra body weight now. And I can have around 25 to 30 good tries for the clean explosive muscle up procession, which is a lot. So that tells me if you can pull up 30 to 50% extra body weight, it should be enough. I am sure a lot of you are wondering where I bought this pull up bar to continue my training. Full disclosure, I'm not sponsored, but if you click the link in the video description to buy the pull up bar, I will receive a commission in return. This is a great way to support my channel, and it's also a great way for you to continue training as usual. As always, make sure to like and subscribe and check out my website geekclimber.com. See you in the next video.